guys welcome back to my channel i am miss lauren lee 11 and today i'm coming to you from my desk yes thought you know sitting at my desk might as well just film so as you can see i have a well it was a braid out my daughter just brushed out my hair but this is what i like to call a quarantine braid out because i have my felicia braids in which i don't even care anymore i think they look cute <laughs> but i thought let me just put on some bit of pizzazz you know put on some concealer and some uh loose out my braids and just come to you looking a bit more fresh and not so frowsy right so let's start this video guys i don't know what this lighting's like guys sorry i'm just using my oh that's better is, is that better for you guys yeah i think that's better what about that light oh i like that today's video is called here's what i've learned when dealing with natural hair and these are all the things that i've found since doing my big chop so if you've seen my four year natural hair journey video from big chop till now i was showing you all the things about my hair talking about the fact that i didn't like my big chop and how i've come to have long thick hair today so i'm just gonna say the do's and don'ts stuff that i've just picked up along the way during those four years that i didn't know back then okay so the first one being is not to follow what everyone says now when i first started my natural hair journey and this was even before i big chopped let me go right to the beginning so when i transitioned from relaxed hair i was just obsessed with kenya moore's hair and I wanted Kenya more hair. <laughs> so I was like, look, I need to figure out how she does her hair. But obviously, I couldn't find any YouTube videos on her hair. So obviously, as you do, you search up YouTube, which I did. And I came across the Glam Twins. And they have a very similar hair texture to mine. For a long while, I was following their regimen. And for a long while, it worked. But the only thing is, guys, with me, I have kids. When you have kids, you need to make everything just... It can't be so time consuming. I can't be doing deep conditioning, then conditioning, then steam. I can't be doing all of that. Not with children. And even if I didn't have children, guys, I don't want to. I was like, okay, I love what they're doing with their hair. They're keeping it super healthy, but it's a lot of time and effort. So I kind of broke off to other videos and just tried to figure out my own regimen, basically. I tried not to follow what everyone was doing. And it's not just what worked best for my hair, but what worked best for my schedule. And unfortunately, their regimen didn't work best for my schedule. It worked very well for my hair, but it was just too time consuming. So that's the first point. Okay, the second one kind of ties in with the first point, And it's to not listen to what everyone tells you to do with your hair. I am so sick and tired. Do you know what? I'm not even anymore. I was at a point where I was sick and tired of people telling me what I should be doing with my hair to make it grow or what I shouldn't be doing to my hair because it won't make it grow. And to be honest, I've just shut out all that noise now. It's just noise. So I'm thinking like, look, it's hair on my head. If I want to color my hair, are you then going to discipline me for that? I'm not talking about people giving me advice saying maybe try this or maybe don't do that because it could be harmful for your hair. I'm not talking about those ones, guys. Just do what your hair asks you to do. This sounds silly, but it's like someone saying to me, I only eat McDonald's every day for a month and that will make you lose weight. I know my body. I know that's not going to make me... I know that's not going to make me lose weight. <laughs> that's how ridiculous it is to me. Okay, so that is number two. Number three is to learn to love your hair at every stage. Now, what I meant by this is, as I said, when I done my big chop, Ooh, I hated it. The curl pattern changed in the sense that my curls were now so short that my hair was a lot tighter and I didn't know how to manage it. No matter what I tried to do with it, I tried to do sleep back wash and go, so just like all sleep down and my hair would just spring back up. Now I know that if I was to do that style, obviously put a headscarf on until your hair's dry. But I didn't know that at the time. That was like four years ago. I did not know that at the time. I know it's like common sense now, but you know, I didn't know. So I've learned along the way to just love each stage of my hair. And to be honest, that's the best thing I could do. Obviously I like length, but also the health is important to me. Otherwise I literally would just have to cut off my hair and start again. And I am not feeling to do that. Although the other day I almost took scissors to my hair, but that is a whole nother video. <laughs> so wait for that one guys. Yeah, just, um, it's no harm looking at videos, seeing obviously what may work or may not work for your hair. I've tried doing perm rod sets and I love the way they make my hair turn out, but again, it's so time consuming and no one tells you that when you're sleeping on these perm rods that it hurts. I just don't like to have to do too many things to be pretty. Pretty anyway. <laughs> this is the next point. Don't overdo it. I keep referring back to my natural hair journey video because obviously it shows you the different stages that i'm referring to and how i've come to where i am today 
but don't overdo it. And that was one of them. There was a point in the video where I was showing you that I dyed my hair and it turned out orange. My hair was fried. I had stringy straight bits and then I dyed it again the next day, guys. Yes. Yes, I did. You can imagine the damage that done. If you want to see, you can go and click on after this video. Research. If you're going to do anything to your hair, research. I don't think I'll be dyeing my hair anytime soon. The color that my hair is now is literally, this is my natural color. This was my color when I was a child. My ends always seem to be a lot browner than the rest of my hair. Um, my hair is not processed. It's not chemically treated it's not anything this is literally just the color of my hair but if you overdo it you'll end up with no hair and you will have to start again okay so the next point hair grease really is your friend okay well hair grease might not be your friend but it's definitely my friend it's literally been 50 50 with hair grease on my hair grease videos people hate hair grease or people love it uh, hair grease is something that i've grown up on i never had any adverse effects of it when i was a child i never hated it as a child at the same time hair grease <laughs> I love hair grease. I just, I just don't know what to tell you. The next one. So here, this leads on from my last point. Hair grease is my friend. Creams and butters aren't. Creams and butters are only good for a certain while. But again, I only noticed the effects of creams and butters on my hair after using it for a period of time, basically. I stuck to the same brands during a period of time, if that makes sense. So it'd either be cream of nature for a while, for a couple to four months, let's say. Um, Cantu, Shea Moisture. It's just a thing, my hair just doesn't work well with creams and butters. And I've seen people with type four hair who it's just amazing. I'm just like, how comes my hair can't go like that? My hair just doesn't like creams and butters. Now, if I put in a leave-in and then put hair grease in, it's fine. But creams and butters as a styler or a leave-in without anything on top, without sealing it, mm -mm. hair doesn't like it. Another one, guys, this kind of goes back to the first point that I was making. I don't deep condition my hair all the time. And as of late, I'm gonna be very honest. I can't remember the last time I deep conditioned my hair. This is my number one reason. I don't want to. It's very time consuming. I find just putting a conditioner in my hair, leaving that in for about 15 minutes, this is fine. And then I wash my hair every four days anyway, so my hair is getting the amount of moisture that it needs. I'm gonna be very honest. The only time I saw a difference to my hair with deep conditioning is when I straightened my hair and I'd apply deep conditioner like in the wash day before. And then the ends of my hair were nice and silky and smooth. But I still can get that effect now if I straighten my hair with hair grease. To be honest, I just don't think, oh, I just don't need deep conditioners. I don't think it's an essential item that I need, so it's not something that I necessarily purchase. I don't mind spending 24 pounds, 30 odd pounds, even 40 pounds on hair products that I know are gonna last a while and are gonna work for my hair. It's not really doing anything much for my hair and I can make a mask at home. I just don't need it. <laughs> That's simple. Okay, so this is another one. Um, the myth about protective styling. Now, the reason why I can say it's a myth is because protective styling does help your hair to grow. Let me scratch that. Protective styling helps to retain length and I'll tell you the difference between hair growth and length retention in a minute. Protective styling does help to retain length because it's a low manipulation hairstyle. Now, I've seen in videos people say, if you have a bun and your, or a low ponytail, let's say, like I like to wear, or a wash and go, it's not a protective style. Um, I just class it as a low manipulation style, basically, and I think that's what a protective style is, i.e. braids and stuff like that. I think they're just low manipulation styles. My hair grew the most during the time that I was wearing wash and goes. Even when I got to shoulder length, where my hair was just rubbing hair, I had it in wash and goes where I had gel cast on my hair. Even though they were touching my shoulder and my clothes, they weren't really rubbing because I suppose they were protected by the gel cast, I guess, I don't know. But to be honest, that's the fastest my hair has ever grown. I do think that for me, a wash and go being a low manipulation style is more protective than an actual protective style where you're putting a lot of tension on your hair, i.e. braiding and camera in. And don't get me wrong, I like to have braids and what have you, but not just not for a long period of time. But I feel it can start to make your hair weak. Yeah, old school methods work wonders. So this goes back to my point again about not using deep conditioners. So I've spoken about in my hair grease video, how my mum just used to wash our hair, condition it, and then grease it and braid it. My hair was in braids, for no more than a week and then she'd repeat the process that grew my hair immensely when i was a kid my hair was like waist length i feel like my mum and grandma knew what they were doing okay so the difference between this is what i'm talking about now the difference between hair growth and lymph retention your hair always grows your hair doesn't always retain length 
And what I mean by that is, hair growth is usually be determined by factors such as genetics, which I'm sure you've heard. Um, what you put into your body, i.e. food, junk food, healthy food, water, alcohol, medication possibly. Whereas, length retention is what you're doing to your hair to help retain length, or what you're not doing to your hair to make it break, basically. So, let me go into that in a bit more detail to see if that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> so I just felt like I had a little bit of a ramble there. <laughs> Let's start with hair growth. So hair growth. Um, when I had low iron, and I had low iron for about two years straight, my hair just reached a plateau. And that wasn't to do with wash and goes. Iron in your body carries the oxygen in your blood. Your scalp needs oxygen. Now, my scalp wasn't getting the oxygen it needed, therefore, it wasn't allowing my hair to grow at the rate that it should be growing, if that makes sense. Now my iron count is back up, my hair is starting to grow rapidly. Again, with length retention, there's things that you can do to retain length, like I said, sealing your ends. I sealed my ends for a long time in washing guys, as I mentioned, with gel casts. I now seal my ends with hair grease. Again, if I'm going to comb through my hair, I never comb through my hair dry. I always spritz it with water first, so it's more malleable. That's the difference between length retention. Length retention is what you do to your hair to retain the length or what you don't do to your hair, which can cause breakage. And hair growth is what you put into your body to help, hair, help your hair to grow, if that makes sense. Another thing I was gonna say, guys, with hair growth, the way that I can judge if my hair is actually growing to how it should be or if it's not growing to how it should be my skin and nails are a major indication of how my hair is going to grow and what i mean by that is if i start to break out like i have done or my nails start to break very easily to me that's the indication that my hair is lacking what it needs this is my opinion i think this is an unpopular opinion I think, again, it's kind of like 50-50. Some people say yes, some people say absolutely no way. And what I'm talking about is greasing my scalp. I love to grease my scalp. Me greasing my scalp has made my hair the way it is. My hair has not been straightened. This is my hair. I put a little bit of hair grease on my hair itself, but then I usually put the most, not the most, but I put, I grease my scalp. <laughs> Just say it like that. And what that tends to do is, it tends to make my hair uniform. So if you can see, the strands are going to where they need to go. So they're all connecting together where they want to. I don't have any adverse effects. It does not uh, block my scalp follicles. As I said, I wash my hair every four days and I haven't had any adverse effects. The only thing I can say is to be aware, and I mentioned this in the previous video, um, one of them that I use that's very good for my hair contains sesame seed oil. And my son is actually allergic to sesame seed oil. I've learned that I have to wash my hair every four days. Reason being is, after the fourth day, my scalp starts to itch like nobody's business. And it doesn't matter how much I grease my scalp, my scalp will start to itch, okay? And I don't wanna obviously put hair grease on top of dry scalp, because that's just weird. <laughs> but what I have discovered is, I just couldn't be bothered to wash it on the fourth day, the itching actually starts to subside after a few days, if you can bear it, guys. So if you want to stretch your hair and your hair's still looking nice after the fifth or sixth day, but you're having itching, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how to maintain that, that itch. I think you just have to grin and bear it until it goes. And then after that time, guys, it starts to subside. I can't remember her name. The YouTuber was saying that it's a well-known thing that when you was growing up, you would hear the saying that dirty hair is hair that grows. I haven't heard that. But one thing I do know helps my hair to grow is maintaining moisture. So the dirtier my hair gets, the longer it is without moisture. Therefore, the more breakage I personally experience. Another one, this is one that actually damaged my hair. This is one that I think a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon and then I only saw the positive effects of it, but I didn't experience anything positive from this. And what I'm talking about is rice water. So I done the whole process of watch videos, different multiple videos, not just one. I do my research because of how to prepare the rice water. Once I used it on my hair, it made my hair very brittle very dry I actually had to wash and I've, I've done this about three different times just to make sure the last time just to make sure but it made my hair very brittle very dry um, it was like straw I couldn't even leave it on my hair long enough to see if it would help it grow because it just felt like my hair was gonna snap off anyway so did not work for me I do like to try new things but that is just one thing that I had just had to throw away and leave that alone mm -mm, not for me 
Yeah, as I mentioned before, one another thing that does work for me is homemade mask. And one of my favorite masks I like to do is mayo and olive oil. It literally makes my hair feel like rope like it's so strong <laughs> after i've washed it out i'll leave that in my hair for about 30 minutes doesn't make my hair greasy at all that just makes my hair feel i don't want to say juicy let me find another word for juicy let's let's find another word shall we i've got my thesaurus on here <laughs> oh makes my hair very luscious and succulent <laughs> hello <laughs> I was having some fun with my son's hair, as you can see. He's got a man bun today. Oh, here comes my daughter. Here's my daughter. I've got to do her hair because she's so pretty. I don't know where she's dressing up going. I think she's she's got what's the word? Something fever? Cabin fever? Okay, and I think I'm, I'm moving on to my um, last point now. No matter how similar your hair texture is to somebody's, not everything that works in their hair is going to work for yours. And I can wholeheartedly say that because my mum's hair has a very similar curl pattern to mine. It's very tightly coiled, but her strands, and I keep saying this guys, her strands are like mixed here basically of like black and white. My strands are more Afro hair. They're more, I'd say a bit slightly more coarse than hers. So I think with our curl textures and curl patterns, we have to look at it like this. It's kind of like fingerprints. They're unique to us. I think our curl patterns and textures our hair is unique to us, obviously. Understand your hair, understand your curl pattern and your texture, and do what works for you. There's no problem like asking me for help. I, that's what I'm here for, guys. I love that. I love the fact that you confide in me enough to ask for my help. But at the same time, guys, you got a trial and error. That's what, that's what I had to do. We may be hair twins. Doesn't mean that we're twin twins. <laughs> All right, so yes, guys, that I think shall be it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good tips and hints and what have you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Share this video and turn on your notifications. All right, so I will see you soon. Bye.